If God knows everything, why do we have passages in the Bible that say things like, God tested so-and-so in order to know all that was in his heart? Hi, welcome to Little Lessons. Today's question is a great one because we do have passages in the Bible that talk about God testing people in order to find out what was in their hearts. Um, one example that stands out early in the Bible is uh, when God tested Abram. And it actually says God tested Abram. Told him to go sacrifice his son, Isaac, up on a certain designated mountain. And when uh, Ab Abram lifted his uh, arm to slay his son, the Lord stopped him, of course, and said, Now I know that you fear me because you've not withheld your son, your only son from me. So what's, what's going on here? If God knows everything, why is he testing people? And why is he saying things like, now I know? Well, um, the truth is that God does know everything that there is to know. But if there's no outcome uh, that's, you know, in, in some kind of incident involving free moral agents, if there is no outcome, if there is no choice ever made, how could God know that? It's not something that can be known because it never happens. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, if, if you ask God, what will be the final score in the game today between the New York Giants and the Pittsburgh Penguins? Well, God would say, I don't know. Because, you know, there is no game today between those two teams, okay? So, you know, it's an unknowable thing. It's, there's not going to be any outcome in the future, so there's nothing for God to know. Um, so foreknowledge is not quite all that it's cracked up to be. Uh, let me give you another example. This sometimes helps people to understand this concept. Let us say that you had an amazing ability to predict the outcome of every football game played this football season. And before every single game, you, you announce, the final score will be, and lo and behold, you were right every single time the entire football season. All right, well, that would be amazing. And maybe, just maybe, they would say the next season, why should we even play these games and risk the injuries and so forth and go through all of the trouble it takes to play these games? Let's just gather everybody in the stadiums, gather the two opposing teams, and then we'll bring you out onto the middle of the field and we'll ask you who would have won this game today. You know, because you, you've demonstrated, you've hit it a hundred times out of a hundred in last season, so you have this ability to foreknow the future, so tell us now, you know, who would have won the game today? And what will you say? Well, you have to say, I don't know, because the game isn't going to be played. And so there is no final score to know, and so there's no final score to foreknow. You got it? Okay, great. So, so when God says, you know, now I know, well, we can safely assume that he knew, you know, foreknew long before, but the, the you know, it, it, the, the knowledge of the outcome uh, became available to be known and to be foreknown at the outcome. Now, when I've explained this, I've found that a certain percentage of people can get it and a certain percentage just can't get it no matter what what I say. But just think about this now. If, uh, if God would not have tested Abraham with that, you know, it's obviously a very serious test. I mean, go sacrifice your son. This is, uh, you know, a huge test. And the New Testament says that Abraham actually believed God was going to raise Isaac from the dead. But nevertheless, still a huge, huge, huge test. And if God had, say for example, stopped Abraham as he was like unpacking the donkey and loading up the, or, or excuse me, loading up the donkey, putting the firewood on the donkey, and maybe getting ready to start on the journey, he, he, he wouldn't know for certain 
whether Abraham wouldn't have changed his mind en route to the place of sacrifice, because there's that possibility. You see, uh, God could have said, now I know that you certainly are looking like you intend to do this, but people, you know, understandably, you could change your mind between now and the time when you lift up your knife to actually slay your son. And so God let him go all the way to the last minute, and then he stopped him and said, now I know. It's, it, there's no debate as to what's in your heart. And uh, another interesting point revolving around all this, people think that, you know, God knows what's in our hearts by looking with his kind of x-ray glasses there, and he can look down in our heart and say, oh yeah, yeah, that, that person loves me. Well, maybe God could do that and can do that, but the way that God finds out what's in our hearts is by looking at what we do by our actions. That reveals what's really in our hearts. And when we say things like, well, we don't know what's in their hearts, you know, this person who just did this horrible, d d dastardly deed, well, yeah, yeah, we don't know everything that's in their hearts, but Jesus said, out of the heart arise all these evil things, you know, uh, adulteries and murder and fornication and so forth. And so we know what's in the heart of the murder, murder. We know what's in the heart of the adulterer, adultery. And guess what? So does God because he watched him. And this is uh, just the edge of a subject that really is fascinating when you begin to study it in scripture. I wrote a book on it that covers a lot of, a lot of the uh, ramifications of it called God's Test. You can read it at davidservant.com but it helps to understand, helps to explain rather, um, a lot of the things that people were scratching their heads about. Why does God allow some of these things? Well, part of the reason, no doubt, is because he's testing people and he has to test them to know what's in their hearts because God has a plan one day to have a kingdom and it's only gonna be uh, full of people whose hearts are his. It's the most important thing to make sure that your life reveals that uh, you love God with all your heart. Okay, thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you next time.